Hey everybody, if you've watched the channel for any length of time, you know that Nikki and Kate love classic Morris Miners. And if you've paid attention to my videos, you know that I feel kind of the same way about classic VW Beetles. This behind me is a 1971 VW Super Beetle that has had a lot of work done on it. And it's a little bit special. So this is Jason from Niels Motors in Biddeford, Maine. And he's going to tell us a bit about this honestly fantastic car behind us that I might be having inappropriate feelings about. So give me the rundown on this thing. So this car came in originally and it came in well damaged in the back. It, they actually ended up having a fire with the original engine. Um, a beetle that had an engine fire. A beetle that had I an engine fire. I am shocked to hear <laughs> that happen. So anyways, um, the beetle came in and the customer um, spent some time in California and they were doing a lot of EV swaps out there. Um, and he asked us if we'd be interested in trying to EV swap this vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, so we said, sure, let's go for it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we ended up going with a Warp 7 engine um, it has roughly 90 horsepower now. Um, Which for a Beetle, for people who don't know, is a lot. Uh, this car stock would have had, I believe, a 1600cc dual port motor, which would have produced right around 45 40, horsepower. 45 horsepower, When it was roughly. new, so assume if you see one on the road today, it's not doing that. So this car has double the horsepower it had new. Double the horsepower. Um, and it roughly has a range of 100 miles uh, if you're doing about 100 miles an hour. Okay, <laughs> so 100 at 100. That 100 is at 100. nothing to sneeze at for no. a Beetle. So what, uh, what do people tend to get out of it if you're not going 100? So if you're not going 100, you could probably get it roughly like 120, 140. All right. um, it all depends on acceleration, uh, charge rate. Um, if you've charged, if it's got a full charge on it, you're probably gonna go right around 120, 130, somewhere like that. So, okay, you're taking a car which, though I love them, were never designed for high performance. Correct. So what did you have to do to it to make it able to withstand going 90 miles an hour with, it's got to have a fair bit of torque. It does. I mean... It does have a fair bit of torque. <laughs> we ended up going through the transmission. Mm -hmm. We ended up going through the... So it has the original transmission. It does have the original transmission. All right. We upgraded the clutch. However, you don't technically need the clutch. <laughs> Do you need the gears or do you just leave it in second and just go from there? You can go second, third, fourth, first gear is a little, don't really need it so much. Because <laughs> there's so much torque. So, so much torque and it's it, the speed to get up to first is, you'd be switching to second <laughs> pretty quickly. Um, we up upgraded the clutch and uh, we went with a lighter flywheel right. uh, just to increase that torque, that torqueness. Yeah. Um, and we ended up um, going through the axles as well, mm -hmm. um, just, to make sure everything was good and it could handle that kind of torque. I mean, let's torque. be honest, if you're doing a bunch of work on an old Beetle, you should be going through the axles anyway. Yes, no correct. What. And then you told me you also upgraded the brakes? We upgraded the brakes. We went to disc brakes in the front and we All went right. to, um, uh, we kept the rear drum brakes, but we completely went through them. We ended up doing the suspension completely. So has it gained a lot of weight? It has gained a lot of weight because we put 20, 15 batteries in the front, 20 in the rear. Yeah. And those batteries are passively cooled. So right. the motor is air cooled, but the controller is liquid cooled. Yeah, Correct. that makes sense. And the motor has fans or is it just passive? It's just passive as well. All right. Yep. So how does it handle? Actually really well. It, it's very tight in the steering um, and right. you can handle that acceleration. Um, I got it up to roughly about 75, 80. And if you've ever done 75 and 80 in I, a, a normal Beetle, um, very I, scary a little I bit. Have, I, I will say the fastest I've ever gone in a Beetle is, uh, there were three digits. There were three digits. There wow. were three digits, just barely. It, yeah. was a, it was a 1974 Super with the original 1600cc dual port. And uh, it was very, 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 very loud. Yes. Uh, in fact, I first found Niels because this is who used to work on my air cooled Beetle when that was my daily driver. For things that I didn't feel comfortable doing on my own in my driveway, I would bring it here. Uh, and yeah, when you're in a when you're in a Beetle going 80, 90 miles an hour, the motor is or the engine is just roaring. Yes. Even if you've got good sound deadening, yeah. and the whole thing tends to shake a little bit. 
like it might just fly apart at any exactly, moment. Exactly, yes. Uh, it is exhilaratingly stupid yes. as things to do. Uh, I did it once to say, like, I saw what she could do, and then I never ever <laughs> did it again. And I will say that as I as I slowed down, I was briefly relieved that my, my pistons were still moving freely in the yes. cylinders. So this thing, you find a lot nicer. Sta yeah, I much imagine. more stable. And the weight of the batteries actually force the front of the car down, of which course, I'm yeah. sure if when you were doing triple digits <laughs> and it wants to lift you got it rear wants to engine, lift. all you have to traditionally up front is a small gas tank it's Correct. a lot like a lamborghini muria in this one way and no other way in that at high speed the front end starts to lift up a little bit and the steering gets very steering loose gets very loose yes. whereas i imagine yeah all the weight of this or it keeps it planted it does unlike the classic advert though i imagine this won't float anymore no <laughs> so there you go, you can't have an EV Beetle if you care about it floating. <laughs> but for other things, pretty fantastic. Yes. So why did Niels do this? So uh, This we, was your first EV conversion. This was our right? first EV conversion. But you've been seeing customers who have EVs for regular maintenance Correct, stuff, yes. We see right? a lot of Teslas and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, we just knew the industry was starting to turn towards a lot of electric cars mm -hmm. and parts yeah. as you're well aware are starting to get hard to come by for yeah, these things. When I when I got into Beatles twenty years ago, I could still buy new parts. Yes. Uh and now I mean there's it's some things very... that are just impossible. Find a thermostat for a Beetle today. Yes, the air cooled thermostat. Yeah, the old air cooled yep. wax thermostats yep. because the factory burned down in the like early two thousands and they just said, screw it, never made them again. Yeah. So you, you're imagining that a lot of customers are going to want to look at electric conversions on their classic vehicles to keep them on the road. Correct. Yeah, you, you, lose, you lose the whole engine oil leaks, valve adjustments, oil changes. Is it, is it a Beetle if it doesn't leak oil? It, this thing probably leaked oil when it was brand new yes, from the factory. Yes, they do. We've, we've done a lot of reseals on <laughs> engines and they, they do stop leaking oil, but over time long? yeah not very long they do <laughs> you're always going to have that small drip on that so you Volkswagen. don't have oil leaks in yeah. cars that do have water cooling systems of course the beetle doesn't you don't have to worry about cooling, cooling leaks, systems yep. you don't have to, no coolant leaks no you know water pump no failures. gas lines no gas yep. leaks yep again a thing that beetles are notorious for is leaking gas correct i believe you actually replaced a section of my fuel line once because oh, yes. i had a hard line that had developed a, a pinhole in it. Yep. Uh, and beetles, uh, traditional beetles with petrol engines, uh, they do like to burn. Uh, so, I mean, this is going to be safer. It's going to drive better. You're not going to have to worry about emissions. We're starting to see more and more places cracking down on emissions. You know, parts of Europe where you can't go into city centers without an ultra low emission or vehicle or an electric vehicle. And this is a way to keep them on the road. Correct. Uh, are you anticipating doing more EV conversions then? Is I that the hope? I think so. We already have a Carmen Ghia lined up. Oh, um, an electric Ghia. An electric Ghia. delightful. Yeah. We're going to end up doing the Warp 9 in that one. Um, that one's going to have, I believe, 130 horsepower, so after, if I recall. So for people who don't know, the Carmen Ghia was basically an adorable coupe version of a Beetle. And VW leaned into the fact that it looked like a sports car and was slow as can be. The very, very famous ads with one not succeeding in breaking through a piece of paper. And a uh, lot of talk about how speed isn't everything. So finally, without having to drop some stupid LS motor in it, yes. you're finally going to be able to have a common gear that actually performs the way it looks. Yes, correct. That's delightful. Yep. So I noticed you kept the tailpipes. We did keep the tailpipes. So. From the outside, I have to say, I know bugs and I know electric cars. And there is really nothing on the outside of this car that would tell you it was anything but a traditional VW. Uh, it still has the, the pea shooter tailpipes, of course, do absolutely nothing but look pretty. Uh, once the charge port door is closed, you'd never see the J1772 connection. I mean, unless you happen to catch a glimpse of orange wiring under the bonnet, or if you look inside and see some of the instrumentation inside, you would never know this is anything but a classic 1971 Super Beetle. And I find that really, really appealing. Yeah. 
that's what we went for. We wanted it to look like a classic beetle going down the road and nobody be the wiser except for when you pulled up to a stoplight and you're like, I don't hear that thing running. <laughs> and I have to say, you added a resistive heater to it. We did, yeah. So not only is it a beetle that doesn't leak oil, it's a beetle with reliable heat. And I say that as someone who daily drove beetles in New Hampshire and Maine for many, many years and can remember scraping the inside of my windshield as I was driving down the road because air-cooled rear-engine cars in very cold climates are frankly not great uh, for all that I love them. So I, I love that this has a heat to it. You does. so easily could have skipped it. I mean, yes, it's, yes. it's a, it's a drop-top. Like You so easily could have said, forget about it. Beetles don't have heat anyway, but you put heat in it. And yes. I love that. And we actually used the factory heat tubes that go up to the front. Oh, that's fantastic. So there was no major alter alterations as far as that went. Oh. We just mounted the heater under the back seat, <laughs> ran the tubes into the locations, and bam, heat coming out the normal locations. So enough talking about it. Let's go drive the damn thing. I'm Man, in first I'm... gear and it'll just roll. I'm such a sort of classic beetle guy. The fact that the oil light and gen light didn't come on really bothered me. Yeah and that obviously it's not going to come on that silly but it really bugged me <laughs> yeah so this one ha basically has my on shows me that the key is on and the system is active mm -hmm. and then i have my normal 12 volt gauge here and you yeah. can see it's charging at 14 because i have an inverter hooked to the high voltage system mm -hmm. so the high voltage system when the key is on is charging my 12 volt battery yeah that makes sense yeah and then this gauge is basically showing me um the voltage pack yeah, power. Um, and as you can see, I'm only on the brake and I am in gear and we're not moving until I hit yeah. throttle. So, off we'll go. No, that's officially the strangest thing I've ever experienced. It does feel very I funny know, the first time. I know beetles really well and this is profoundly weird. Yes. But you still get a bit of transmission growl. You do, especially in first gear which I tend when I drive it, I don't use first gear as much. Right. And the very cool thing is I come to a stop sign and you can feel the resistance yeah. when I let off the throttle. That's the regenerative braking, um, but I don't have to push the clutch. Oh my word. <laughs> That's wild. A beetle shouldn't throw you back into your seat. It does though. It is very odd to see the fuel gauge not working as well. <laughs> yeah, well, no, not for me. <laughs> yeah. But I imagine for, for you as someone who yeah. works on these cars, not having working fuel gauge is weird. Yeah. For me, that's just owning a Beetle. The, the normal gauge in the car, the factory speedometer, that's all it's for. Everything yeah. else is, is it's been gone. modified, blinkers. Um, Does the odometer still work? The odometer still works with the speedometer, that's it. That's fabulous. Yeah. This is a very quiet drive. <laughs> it's a, it does not, it feels, I'm an EV guy. I've been driving EVs for years now. I work for an EV company or a company that reports on green technology. I know electric vehicles, but I still feel this like instinctive, oh my God, we've stalled. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> because that... it's, it's a beetle that's silent and that's so odd. And something else you didn't normally get in a beetle, RPM. Oh, that's true. Which I can actually see the RPM of the electric motor. <laughs> so does headlight controls and everything still route through the switches? Headlight controls are still through the factory switches, factory hazards, um, and then you can still control your vents for your heat when yeah. you do operate your heat on. I'll pull down this neighborhood and we'll show you the uh, reverse polarity ver uh, option on this car. I am still in first gear. Yeah. And then I can flip this and still first gear. And off we go backwards. That is so odd. So that's primarily for people who might not have a gearbox. Correct. If, if you don't have a gearbox in, in that case, that's that's an option with the system. Yeah. Um, we kind of wanted to put a couple different options for the customer. Yeah. Um, that's kind of that's kind of a cool option. Like say you're in a parking lot, you cruise past the spot and you're like, oh, and you don't have to shift gears, just flip that the lever. Is, that is interesting. Yeah. It's a bug that really moves. It does. That double double of the factory horsepower is yeah, and it I definitely imagine does a lot for significantly this car. more than double the factory torques. Yes. Yeah, it will put you in the back back seat for sure. 
what a way to keep a classic on the road. Yeah. And I mean, Beatles were dirty, dirty cars in terms of their, their emissions. And this is a way to have a clean Beetle, which is just fantastic. I love it. The uh, upgraded suspension with that extra weight, it yeah. does make this car drive like a dream. It is a whole different ride to a Volkswagen Beetle. Yeah, I'm not bouncing all over the place. Yeah, very easy to get out the 50, 60 and second, third gear. Yeah, typically second, third gear in a Beetle, you could get to 50, 60 miles an hour in third, yeah. but you'd be deafened. Yes, yeah. Now, now it's a very quiet ride. I think the thing I'm, I was unprepared for was the degree to which it feels like a beat. Yeah. I mean, you've still got the buzz of the transmission. You know, it's not that completely smooth thing of a traditional modern EV. You've still got a bit of growl, which I really, really like. Yeah. And the, but the power is just like nothing I've experienced in a bug. Yeah, you still get to keep that classic feel of shifted gears in a Volkswagen Beetle without. And you still get you get some of that. You get some of the vibration. Yeah. You get some of the harshness that I think of and associate with a classic car, in a way that I, I actually really enjoy. One of the things I don't miss in my Tesla or my Bolt, but in a Beetle, I think I really would. Yeah, and that's that's the one one thing I think people are going to start loving when you're taking your classic cars and going into an electric, electric conversion, um, you get to keep that classic feel, but you're upgrading that torque and power and environment, environmentally friendly, um, you know, way of keeping your car on the road yeah. for a long time. And I mean, this is a car that, that could be on the road for another 50 years. Exactly. Yeah, and there's, they, the battery, the battery uh, technology is getting better. Oh yeah. So there's nothing saying that you can't upgrade. I made the battery boxes um, bolted covers to get into them, but you can still get into them and swap out these batteries for you know a more technology friendly battery yeah, later as, on in the future. Yeah, as the battery tech evolves. Exactly. And you may be may, may be able to cut down on some of that extra weight too. Yeah. Though I, I think I quite like the feel of it with some weight up front. It, it does help a lot. It, it makes the suspension feel so much stiffer and uh, yeah. more control of the car. I really liked the way that the uh, charging connection in the petrol filler area just looks so seamless. It did. Um, originally, they don't do that um, we wanted to give it a little extra flair yeah. um, and, and mount it in that location. I remember the first time I charged this, it took almost 30 hours <laughs> because we had to take each individual battery of 35 of them mm -hmm. and we had to, I had to drain them in a way that I could bring them all to 2.75 volts yeah. individually and then hook them all together and charge them all so together. So getting the whole battery conditioned and the array assembled and everything was Correct. a whole process in itself. That was a whole process in itself. Interesting. I was able to uh, draw down my batteries. I was able to do roughly two a day. Wow. And I had to do 35 of them. So it took almost three weeks just to draw batteries all the way down so I could connect them all together and charge yeah. them all together so they all um, conditioned correctly. On the other hand, having done that, you only have to do that once. Correct. So, just mean, the initial uh, put together that has to be done. Yeah. And that's just so they get all charged together at the same rate and that endures battery life. What's the next thing, do you think, of after Volkswagens? Like, what, what are some other, are there other cars that you look at and you say, I'd love to do a conversion on one of those? I would love to do an Audi TT. With really? With an electric conversion. I just think that would be, I, I've driven a, a Type R Mm -hmm. And it cranked, but I could only imagine with an electric motor with that kind of torque on, like an Audi TT or something yeah. like that. That would be, that'd be, a, I think, a ball. I think, uh, you know, you have, I think you have a, a Land Rover. So is it a Land Rover or a Toyota Land Cruiser sitting yeah, at the that shop would, right now? That would be another I one. I think that would be a, a really fantastic car to convey. It's the challenge with classic cars is that part of the joy of classic cars is their gremlins, is their quirks. But then at the same time, it gets old after a while. It does.
And with these upgraded brakes, they are right there. Especially with that kind of torque. The, the weight is definitely plays a huge role in the way we set up the suspension and the braking. That's so interesting. So what is, do you know what the weight distribution is now? So the weight distribution is, I believe we're about 45, 55. So that's a pretty huge change we, from a classic Beetle. Correct, yeah. Which is usually somewhere around like 30, 70. Exactly. <laughs> and that electric motor we have in back actually cut weight. Oh, of course. the motor to put that in. And we ended up putting 20, 20 batteries just behind the rear seat. In the partial shelf area. Correct, yes. So you've got batteries in the back and it still seats four comfortably. Correct. Or at least as comfortably as it ever did. Yes. We, we did that as well to keep weight over the rear tires. Yeah. But not overhanging the back. Yeah, that's so, fabulous. So that definitely helped our, our weight uh, so, I distribution. Mean, it doesn't put out it doesn't put out carbon dioxide and other nasties into the air. The weight distribution is better, the handling is better, the power is way better. Yes. It doesn't leak oil. Like it just, you know, it just seems like the perfect evolution of the people's car. It's just brilliant. And it still feels like a beetle. I was really, really prepared to not like it, I have to confess. I was really excited. To, to go for a spin but there's a part of me that was prepared to not like it because i just worried it wouldn't be a beetle and it absolutely is and that's just fantastic i think that's a lot of people's reaction um and even a lot of people like on the internet they look at it and they go oh you just ruined a beetle no like, you just you, ruined the driving experience and all that you didn't until I mean, you get into it you just hit you still have that volkswagen feel yeah it's still a bug it's and still that's a bug. just that's fantastic. I love it. I can't afford one. And I think that uh, were I to get another classic car, I would probably end up doing an EV conversion myself. And yes. it wouldn't be, it would not be half as good. <laughs> that, oh, you just shut it off and nothing happened. And that's so happened. weird. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much yeah, for your time. No problem. This was an absolute joy. That's it for today. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and our other two channels, Transport Evolve Take Two and Transport Evolve Shorts. We know that while a fair few of you already are subscribed, many more aren't, so go on, hit the bell and help us out. Let us know below what you thought of this video, and if you're not someone who likes the YouTube's comment section, which is understandable, then why not continue this over on our Discord server? It's free, and we'll leave a link below. Thanks on behalf of the entire T crew, go out to the folks on my right for being our 15 to 49 a month patrons. Special thanks to our 50 a month patrons, David Jenakula, Andrew Martin, Guido Drahada, Brophy Wolf, Taz on the Gong, Paul Conway, Sean Ueda, Gordon C, Regine Fellows, Anomalous Freak, Jim Burness, Kyle Hodson, Anthony Coates, Laura Sanborn, Rory Litwin, and Denny Hyde. And our deepest gratitude to 100 all month Patreon supporters John Lyons, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Will Graylin, Ellery Hensey, and Ian. If you'd like to join the ranks of our wonderful supporters, you'll find links below to Patreon, Bitcoin, and Kofi. And of course, you can also buy your very own Transport Evolve swag over on our Redbubble store. Thanks for joining me, and as always, keep evolving!